Hello, my name is Dr. Jeff Aberly, and in this video I want to talk about treating plantar fasciitis with the Arconia FX 635 low level laser. And you can see it here. Um, but I want to discover, uh, discuss the two different situations. One, where a person comes in with plantar fasciitis and it uh, resolves really quickly, one or two treatments. And the other situation where you get three, four, five, six treatments and it doesn't change at all. And that's the, that's the case I want to discuss because there's a reason for it and I want to give you hope that it probably will change if you give it a little bit of time. And what I want to show you is something very cool. When the scenario when it doesn't work is the scenario where you just don't have a lot of blood vessels down here to feed the tissues that are tight and painful on you. And if it resolves real quickly, you probably do have a lot of blood vessels down there to feed the tissues. Okay, and the lasers are just making, uh, allowing your body to make more energy at that level uh, locally where you hurt because that's where you're shining the lasers. And the lasers affect you right away because everything is there, the oxygen, the nutrients, the glucose are all there because there's a good blood supply. What's missing is the mitochondria are not doing the conversion of oxygen and glucose to the energy of the body called ATP. So if you have both problems, the mitochondrial problem and the lack of blood vessels, you're just not going to see changes right away. And try not, and don't let that discourage you. And for your doctors out there that are doing this, don't let that discourage you either. Continue doing this a, a good number of times and then let it be. And the body will, over the next couple of months, grow new blood vessels in there and the person will then start feeling better without any more treatments being done. So an example is I had a, a woman that uh, really bad plantar fasciitis pain in her left ankle, left uh, foot. And man, I, I usually my treatments are about 30 minutes long. And I, so I did it for 30 minutes, another time, another time, another I think we did five, five to seven treatments, maybe even eight. And it wasn't any different. And, and I told her for the very first visit, I said, now if this doesn't change fast, don't panic. I explained to her everything I'm explaining to you right here. And that's, that's what happened. So after about six or seven or eight times, I just said, why don't we give this thing a break? And not that it would have hurt to continue more, but she had other areas that she wanted laser too. So we started just doing some other things. And sure enough, about a month and a half later, she says, yeah, this thing's finally starting to feel better. And I'm like, yeah, it's exactly what's going on. So it's the, it, you understand, it, it takes time to build blood vessels. They just don't appear in for sure the laser doesn't create the blood vessels. The lasers just allow the um, cells in the area where it's being shined to create more energy and then the body builds more blood vessels. That's the key. So, you know, fundamentally in a, in a plantar fascia case, everyone will be able to relate to this. If, you're, if you have plantar fasciitis, you'll be able really to relate to this, no problem. So here's non-weight bearing and here's weight bearing. So this doesn't hurt, but this does. So you'll see the difference here, I'll just, I'll just hit play, is that when you're going from weight bearing to non-weight bearing, the tissues down here have to stretch. The arch also is normally supposed to collapse when you're weight bearing. Not totally, but it's supposed to collapse. So it, it comes back up when it's not weight bearing and it collapses when it goes back down. And when it goes down, these tissues here have to stretch. And if they don't stretch, this can be very painful through here. It can be painful in the arch. Um, it just can hurt. So what people will do, the typical treatment, is people will say, oh, well, I don't want this to stretch because that's what hurts. So I'm going to put an arch support in there because my foot's an arch anyway, so why not? And what that does then is it only causes it to maybe fall that much every step, weight bearing, versus this much. And so they think they found the most uh, miraculous cure in the world, orthotics or everything, and took away their foot pain, and it's great. Problem is, is a few years later, this now becomes painful, and this becomes just unbearable. They can't even walk without shoes on, and because their arch, it just kills every step. is sharp shooting, you know, right in the vicinity, wherever they're having the problem, you know, again, here, back here. And so they search then for a new orthotic thing is, is I've seen these orthotics that have supposedly gone bad and they're stiff. They haven't changed. They look brand new. Um, you know, they could survive a nuclear holocaust and you'd still be able to use them. That's my point. 
So they, the orthotics have not worn out, but the person thinks the orthotic is worn out because their pain is back. And so um, they can't find anything, of course, um, that's going to work. What are you going to try to do? Make the arch even higher to prevent any stretch? Well, then you end up rolling your ankles if you get it up that high. So the real trick is to restore the flexibility back into this. And that's what the low-level laser therapy does. It's just once in a while you run into these cases that don't seem to respond. And, um, you know, the doctor might just give up on it. Um, say, no, I'm, I, you're just one of these people that's not going to be not going to respond to this. I'm sorry. Um but I bet you if you wait a month or two that it actually does because the blood vessels have now grown back and that's what needed to be done. But in order to get the blood vessels to grow back, you've got to get the cells in the area the energy they need, even if it is with a limited supply of blood, they can then rebuild new blood vessels. And so you go from something like this to something like that. And then, uh, then since the muscles have the uh, nutrition they need and the energy they need, it's really the ATP energy they need, now they're relaxed and they can stretch and be flexible. So that's pretty much what's going on. I have another video on my website, on my YouTube channel, that uh, talks about this. And you can just search Jeff Haberly and this, where I'm in a suit here, that's the channel. Um, and it's on uh, how to loosen tight muscles using low level therapy, low level laser therapy. Now this, this is actually referring to every muscle, but of course, in this case, we're talking about the plantar fascia. So I'm just gonna talk about normal, and uh, just real briefly, this is a 15 minute video on its own, but real briefly, this is the smallest part of a contractile fiber right here. And you put these all in parallel with one another, you know, and then you start getting muscle fibers. So. Uh, the body purposely uses uh, these calcium pumps to keep the calcium out of this area when the muscle is supposed to be relaxed, and then it shoots the calcium into this area when it wants contraction. So in a normal muscle here, I'm just going to play this, and this is, here's the calcium up here. It's purposely kept away, but when a nerve impulse hits, it shoots out the calcium and causes the two ends to come together much quicker than this and then when the contraction goes the nerve impulse goes away these pumps pump the calcium away and the whole thing goes loose again so that's a nerve impulse at the beginning and then the nerve impulse going away and then these calcium pumps keep in this calcium up here away from these fibers okay these calcium pumps are energy hogs even when you're sleeping at night these things are working overtime trying to keep the calcium here versus in here. And that's why we still produce body heat even when we're sleeping. It's one of the big reasons is our muscles still take a ton of energy. And so there's three things in muscle fibers that take energy. The pumps, the actual contraction, and then the relaxation also takes energy, which is kind of weird, but it's the way it is. And um, when, uh, when someone dies with rigor mortis, and you know, I'm sure you've heard of rigor mortis when someone dies, their whole body stiffens up several hours after death. And it doesn't let go until five to six days after that when the body's decayed and the, and the muscle cells don't act like muscle cells anymore and everything lets go. But for days, they're in extreme intense rigor. And it'd be, it'd be silly to try to massage it out because it's a chemical problem. It's the fact that there's no more energy to run the pumps so the calcium just leaks out, fills this whole area, and the last little bit of energy is used to create intense contraction, and it's stuck there. And the only way to get it unstuck would actually be to um, you know, get more blood in there and, and so that the muscle cells can make energy and relax again, which would be silly to do. But in a, in a human being that's alive, uh, you have something in between this. And so you'll have areas that are kind of like the rigor mortis, not entirely like it, but like it where there's a the pumps don't have enough energy to keep the calcium out of here so you do get some calcium in here all the time now you can still consciously contract it even further but there's still tension in there all the time and it's a chemical problem and it's due to the mitochondria in your muscle cells which i show here in another picture uh, somewhere through here there it is the mitochondria in the in the cells you see here's the there's the word mitochondria. And um, so in the, in the video, I go into this, but the mitochondria are the uh, little um, 
organelles within your cells. You can have hundreds of mitochondria within every cell, and their job is to make the energy that the muscles like to run these pumps and do the contraction and do everything, do the cleansing of the cell, do rebuilding of blood vessels, of muscles. You use a lot of ATP when you get injured and you have to rebuild those tissues. It just Energy is everything. It's just like your car is kind of useless if there's no gasoline. But you not only have to have the gasoline, you have to have everything else working too, right? So it's, it, there's a lot of things that have to work. For this, you not only have to have the blood vessels, but you have to have the cells being able to convert the nutrients found in blood, oxygen and glucose, to be able to convert it into ATP, which then, then keep the muscles relaxed and loose and pain-free. And that's what we're talking about. So um, anyway, if you want to see real quick uh, an image of an actual foot. Um, so this is just the our arteries delivering blood to tissues. This is not showing the veins that bring blood back. It would clutter up the picture too much. But but you can see here the bigger vessels bringing blood down, and then they just, they just go into smaller and smaller pieces. So big vessel, smaller, branch, 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 branch. They just get down into smaller and smaller pieces where uh, you just you can barely see them. And, and some of these smaller vessels can only take uh, red blood cells single file. Um, they're that small. And then those connect up to the veins, which then connect and get bigger and bigger and bigger. And then they take the blood back to the heart, which then pumps it to the lungs to reoxygenate it and then send it back down the arteries again to deliver the nutrients to every cell that needs it. That's just the way it is. And so if, let's just say, for example, you didn't have a high density of fiber, of uh, uh, blood vessels down here, you could have the plantar fascial problem in that area. And it, because that area there would be stiff and tight because it's not getting enough blood flow um, and or the mitochondria aren't making enough energy to keep this relaxed. So again, if you're in the situation where you have a good blood supply and you have some plantar fasciitis, you're going to respond quickly. If you're in a situation where you have poor blood flow down there and plantar fasciitis, you're going to respond slowly, if at all in the beginning. But do the lasers anyway. It re-energizes the cells, and then the cells will build new vessels over the course of a few months. And that's the key. So I hope this cleared some things up for you. If you have used the low-level lasers for plantar fasciitis, they really are wonderful. Um, and this applies to knots in other areas of the body, too. If it doesn't change right away, you either haven't exposed it long enough or, enough, or for enough times, or it's, um, you know, if you've done it over and over and over again, you either get in the wrong area, and I'm speaking more to doctors here that are using this, you either hit in the wrong area and the muscles that are tight that you're working on are firing due to something else that needs to be fixed. Um, or you just haven't done it long enough, or you've done it so many times and maybe it just needs a little bit of time to uh, grow new blood vessels in there and bring more blood. So there's um, several things to consider and I just wanted to make a video that explained it all. So I think that's it. Um, uh, yeah, so my name is Dr. Jeff Haberly and um, down below the YouTube video you can respond or, and ask questions. I usually try to get back to those within a day. And uh, uh, if, if you haven't heard of this low-level laser stuff, man, check it out. Uh, the company is called Raconia. It's right there. And this is their FX635 laser and um, really, really fun. I, I've had a blast of them in my practice and uh, made practice really fun by having this extra option in there that um, I just did, like, you know, I'm a chiropractor and this can do things that just chiropractic cannot do because it works on this chemical way and in this chemical basis of getting more energy production uh, wherever you shine them and it's, um, it's just really neat. So uh, again, thanks for watching.